With exciting NASA missions coming up quickly, such as the Artemis mission or the James Webb telescope launch, it only makes sense that we continue to discuss all things space and of course more on the aliens. From a mass UFO sighting, to some things found in the soil on Mars, to an entire other solar system beyond ours, and even more. On today's Life's Biggest Questions video, we are going to be diving into part 3 of the top 10 things that prove aliens exist. Starting off at our number 10 spot, we have Dr. Brian O'Leary. Dr. Brian O'Leary is a former NASA astronaut and was also a physics professor at Princeton. While it totally makes sense that we can't just take one thing that one person says as the truth, it certainly is interesting that someone with his qualifications and expertise would say something that truthfully has been quite polarizing. He explained that there is abundant evidence that we are being contacted, that civilizations have been monitoring us for a very long time, and that their appearance is bizarre from any type of traditional, materialistic western point of view, and that that these visitors use the technologies of consciousness, they use droids, they use co-rotating magnetic disks for their propulsion systems, which seems to be a common denominator of the UFO phenomenon. I don't have this evidence that he's speaking of, nor do I know how these claims could be substantiated, but it is definitely something to consider, regardless of what your current personal beliefs are. This is one that might just be nonsense that was spewed in order to keep people talking, but it is entirely possible that this is the real truth, but most of us have just been convinced conditioned to be too skeptical to believe it. In our number 9 spot today we have the NASA Viking experiment. This is one of the more debated ones on today's list, but that doesn't mean it isn't evidence. In 1976, NASA's Viking landers tested the soil on Mars and found some chemicals that could be attributed to signs of life. The soil was mixed with radioactive carbon labeled nutrients and then tested for the production of radioactive methane gas. The test ended up receiving a positive result, which could indicate that something in the soil is metabolizing the nutrients to produce the gas. Despite further efforts, there still hasn't been any life found, but one of the scientists who worked on this original project, and others as well, stand by what they found and argued that the technology at the time wasn't advanced enough to find the key evidence of life. Hopefully with the new Perseverance rover that landed recently, we'll be able to find all of the signs that we have been looking for. In our number 8 spot today we have black holes. When we think of black holes we usually think of how absolutely terrifying they are, but that may be changing. There has actually been the discovery of a planet that is floating around a black hole. The forces around the hole are also providing heat for the planet as well, but there is one catch and that is the fact that the planet needs to orbit at the speed of light. This would mean that a second on that planet would be hours on ours, which is kind of difficult to comprehend. The planet would have to be in what is called the Goldilocks zone, because if it's too far from the black hole it'll be too cold and there won't be any liquid water, but if it's too close it will of course be sucked into the black hole by gravitation forces. We of course would never know if life exists on this planet because we are far too afraid to go and check it out, which is of course super reasonable, but what if this is the planet that we have been searching for this whole time? While it seemingly isn't the most likely thing, we are also talking about interdimensional travel so there really are stranger things. In our number 7 spot today we have FBI documents. In a video that was released by the hacktivist group Anonymous a few years ago, they discussed some sort of FBI documents that are apparently declassified and just sitting on the website waiting for anyone to come across. These documents apparently suggested that we have not only been visited by aliens, but also by beings from other dimensions. This document was sent in 1947, and while it didn't originate from within the FBI, it was sent in by a university department head, and it was treated with the utmost importance by the FBI. The document goes on to say that the aliens that have visited aren't from a planet as we think of it, but rather some sort of etheric planet that interpenetrates our own, but we aren't able to perceive it. They are able to consciously make their decision to enter our plane, and in the same respect, exit whenever they want. The document says the visits are all peaceful and they are for the purpose of scoping out our planet as they might also want to call it home one day. This certainly is one of those things that you have to draw your own conclusions from, and while it's very good to remain skeptical, it's also imperative that we keep our minds open because who are we to say for sure? In our number 6 spot today we have Frederick Valentich. Frederick was an Australian pilot who disappeared under some unbelievably suspicious circumstances on a training flight on October 21st, 1978. 
During the flight, he radioed the Melbourne Air Traffic Control to let them know that he was being accompanied by an aircraft that was about a thousand feet above him, and at that same time, his engine had begun to run roughly. Air Traffic Control responded to him by explaining that there was no known air traffic at that level, and Frederick explained that he could see a large unknown aircraft with four bright landing lights. He explained the aircraft approached him from the east, and at first he thought it was another pilot playing around with him, which for the record, during a flight seems like a terrible time to play a prank on someone. He then went on to explain that the mysterious aircraft was orbiting him and had a green light on it. When air traffic control tried to get further details and asked what kind of aircraft it was, Frederick responded by saying, it's not an aircraft. After this, his radio transmission was interrupted by a metallic scraping sound, and this is when all contact was lost. Sea and air search began, but to no avail. There have been speculations that don't involve alien abductions, such as a staged disappearance, the possibility of Frederick getting confused and flying upside down, and potentially even him taking his own life, but all of these theories have been debunked in some sort of way, and neither the aircraft or Frederick himself have ever been found. The reason why alien abduction has been the main theory in this case is due to the fact of the many reported UFO sightings on the same night in the same region as his disappearance. It of course leaves us with more questions than answers, but it's all very interesting and very mysterious. In our number 5 spot today we have the Stephenville UFO. In January of 2008 in the small town of Stephenville, Texas, a bunch of residents all saw something in the sky that they couldn't believe. In the beginning there appeared to be white lights in the sky that were first in a single arc, but then they quickly moved to form two parallel lines. It was estimated that the lights were spanning about a mile long and half a mile wide. But the craziest part is that it was flying at 3,000 miles per hour, which is similar to the speed of a fighter jet, but there was no sound reported at all. The government chalked this sighting up to the US Air Force flight operation, but many of the residents who saw this event on that day were absolutely not convinced, and truly some felt like they were lied to. Some even explained that what they saw was too technologically advanced for human civilization. I want you guys to let me know in the comments if you believe this story from the government, or if you trust the instincts of the people in Stephenville who saw the incident that day. In our number 4 spot today we have TRAPPIST-1. TRAPPIST-1 is a star that sits around 40 light years away from us, and it was an important space discovery that first came in 1999. Since 1999, however, the excitement surrounding it has only grown. In 2016, scientists realized that the star had three planets orbiting around it, but in 2017, that number grew as it was discovered that it actually had seven planets orbiting it, making it a solar system not unlike our own. From there, scientists have been able to learn more about it, making it the most well-known solar system apart from the one we live in. While there are a few planets too close and a few planets too far from the star to be in the habitable zone, there are three in a place where liquid water just might be a possibility. Scientists know that the star is somewhere from 5.4 to 9.8 billion years old, which could make it twice the age of our very own sun and solar system, which formed around 4.5 billion years ago. While there is still far more research that needs to be done on the solar system, it most definitely is very interesting. If life was able to be formed here, and there is a similar solar system there, what would make life not be able to form there? Or perhaps it already did once and died off. Truly the possibilities are endless with this one. In our number 4 spot today we have the Roswell incident. This whole rigmarole started in 1947 when some sort of crash took place near a ranch in Roswell, New Mexico. Shortly after this, the Roswell Army Airfield released a statement saying that they had recovered a flying disc from the ranch, but the Army quickly retracted the statement and said it wasn't that, but instead was a conventional weather balloon. This was a little sketchy, but most people let it slide until the 1970s. What happened in the 70s is that a retired lieutenant colonel began to speak out. In an interview with a UFO researcher, he said that the weather balloon story was a cover up and that alien remains were actually recovered from the crash site. There were both first and second hand witnesses who claimed that not only were there at least one, but possibly more alien spacecrafts that had crashed at the scene, but also that extraterrestrial remains were also recovered by the military, who then began to engage in a cover up. In 1994, the story changed changed from a weather balloon to a nuclear test surveillance balloon from Project Mogul, and it was stated that the stories of the alien bodies were probably just test dummies that had been dropped from high altitudes. 
I'm not gonna lie, the whole thing sounds a little sketchy. I obviously wasn't there, so I can't say for certain what happened, but someone is definitely lying about it. What do you guys think? Was it some more or less harmless explanation, or was it really the site of an alien crash? In our number two spot today, we have Insolidus. Yep, we're here again, still can't say that word. Insolidus used to be thought of as basically just an icy snowball floating around in space, or as a small moon of Saturn with a diameter of 502 kilometers, but as it turns out, this small moon might hold some pretty amazing potential. It was discovered that this moon has hydrothermal processes going on underneath its crust. To us non-scientists, that means next to nothing, but what if I said that that means that it just might have all of the requirements for life? and that it is becoming a greater possibility that we might find microbial life there. Basically, this moon has an icy shell for a surface and then a rocky interior, but between these two layers is an ocean, and this ocean is where scientists think life is most likely to be. This discovery came almost accidentally when the Cassini orbiter arrived to Saturn in 2005 and found water plumes shooting out of the cracks in the surface, which made scientists realize that it just may be geologically active. Through more research and by flying the orbit through the water, by the time 2015 rolled around, scientists knew that it was holding all of the keys to life. While this little moon was never the original focus of research, it quickly took over with its incredibly exciting potential. There are not only plans from NASA to have more missions to this moon to see what's going on, but there are also other privately funded missions that are currently in the works. Who would have thought that a tiny moon might be where the alien life is hiding? In our number one spot today, we have radio signals. Basically, we're getting radio signals from somewhere, but we just aren't quite sure what exactly is going on there. It started in 2007 when we began getting what are called fast radio bursts, and they are a totally mysterious phenomena to scientists. These bursts are only a few milliseconds long, but they emit more energy than the sun does in 24 hours, which is just a statement that my brain struggles to comprehend. All of this is already super cool and interesting, but here's an even crazier thing about them. The main thing we know about these bursts is that they are coming from outside of the Milky Way. They're coming from outside of our own galaxy. Space is the coolest thing. This obviously has led a lot of experts to believe that it could be coming from an advanced civilization that is quite far away and they may be trying to contact us, but we just don't have the technology to interpret the signals. Maybe one day scientists will figure out a way to accept whatever message it is they are trying to send, or maybe one day we'll get a visit from them and they'll all be mad at us for not answering their messages. I don't know. <laughs> Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye!